Now, I don't want to sound like a dickhead, but it's so easy to become invisible on YouTube. I have a friend who has an editor, a thumbnail maker, and I think he's made about 50 videos on his channel. Guess how many subscribers he's got? And that's why most people quit, because they make 10, 20, 30 videos and never even cross 1k views. My name's Dennis, and I spent the last two years studying the biggest YouTubers and even proved myself it's easy to grow. I started a completely new channel and got to 5,000 subscribers within one month. On my fourth video, I got 210,000 views. I'll tell you myself that I made tens of videos that got absolutely no views. This is my fourth YouTube channel. And at the end, I'm gonna do a full case study on every single step I did to get that viral video, how I planned it, how I edited it, and the whole process I used to get that video to where it is today. So think about it. Anyone, including you, can be four videos away from going viral. But you have to work smart, not hard. So let me explain everything I know within about 20 minutes. I'm gonna explain the seven step formula that is everything you need to think about when you're creating a YouTube video that you wanna explode. And I'm gonna do it in a no bullshit way. You've probably seen the videos of people like Mr. B saying, Just make 100 videos. videos and then start worrying about views. You need to improve step by step. That's bullshit. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know now. Now the first step in this seven step framework is to follow the proven method. Now the YouTuber that I learned this from was Hamza who has about 2.3 million subscribers and he taught me that when planning videos you should look at those that have already blown up. Within your topic of interest you want to research videos that have done well in the last six months. For example when I was making videos in the academic niche I'll just type in academic on YouTube and see which videos are doing well. You want to look out for videos that have more views than the channel has subscribers. So if a video is published and it has 600,000 views when the channel only has 50,000 subscribers you know that video is popular and interesting people and it's not just that guy's fan base watching it because it's him making it. Treat this like a research project because often copying the titles of successful videos pretty much guarantees you views if the thumbnail and video is good. You want to understand in your specific niche what thumbnail style is popping off, what kind of titles and keywords are people clicking on. And then with the video itself, what are people saying in the first 20 seconds that is hooking their viewer and making them watch till the end? As far as as the title and thumbnail style is concerned I don't see any problem with copying the biggest youtubers but then obviously you need to make your own content and make sure it's good within the video itself let me go back to my friend even though his videos are quite well edited he's got good thumbnails and he's got good titles he's in a dead niche at the moment he's making videos on finance and had he researched properly beforehand finance videos are not getting a lot of views in 2024 whereas me for the education channel I was getting videos every single day about academic weapons and academic comebacks and I saw the exact free image thumbnails that were working for big creators. You can also go onto YouTube Studio and literally see what titles within your niche that people are finding popular. Don't make videos for yourself and about your own interests. Make videos that cater to what people are actually watching. Now the next step on top of this is to make bingeable content. You want people to binge watch your videos. If they come across one, they're going to press on that and then after watching all of the first video, they're gonna go onto your channel and watch more. This is how a video and your channel actually takes off. You'll notice with the new education channel, every single video is about education and studying. That means if a student comes across one video, the other videos will appeal to him because it's in the same topic area. There needs to be correlation in between what you're creating. You really need to be unbiased towards yourself in this moment. Something I've struggled with in the past is to be 150% honest with yourself. Every time you make a video, you should think, if this video popped up on my YouTube recommended page, would I actually click on it? Would I actually watch to the end of it? Would I wanna watch more of this creator? You have to be brutally honest because this is how you grow. With this video, for example, I genuinely know that three years ago when I started my first YouTube channel, this video would have really helped me out and I genuinely would have wanted more advice. So this is why you don't rush putting videos out. You need to understand what your target viewer actually wants and what would actually help them. You should be giving your viewers the same advice that you would give to your younger brother if he was asking you for help. 
you have to genuinely want to help them. Now we all know how competitive YouTube is. This is why you want to become the distiller. For example, there are thousands of videos out there on how to grow on YouTube and content strategy. But if your viewers realize that they can just come to you one channel and get all the information they want to know, then that is so powerful. This is why I'm starting off this channel with a full guide. I want to be the guy that every single new YouTuber knows they can trust and not have to bother with all the other clickbaity people in the same niche that don't actually want to help you, they just want to get the most views and clicks. So again, be that person that genuinely wants to help and can present the most important tips only to their viewers. After your viewer watches a video on that topic, they shouldn't need to watch anyone else. The fourth principle of this framework is that quality rules. You would have heard this so many times in real life, quality is better than quantity. A mistake that a lot of new YouTubers make is setting goals on how many videos they want to put out. A lot of the time, and I did this myself, when I started out, I'd say, okay, I want to put out three videos this week. And when I did this, each of the videos were pretty badly edited because I was rushing, pretty badly scripted and short because I just didn't have enough time to make three high quality ones. What you'll learn is that one very high quality video each week or every two weeks or even every month is so much better than uploading every single day. Scripting this video, for example, took me an entire day and recording it's probably going to take about an hour. But because I didn't rush the scripting, I know that this video is genuinely going to help new YouTubers out there. And it's not just going to be a rush project because sure, you'll get good views if you have a good title and thumbnail. But if people realize that this guy actually isn't giving me that good advice because you've just rushed into making it, then they'll click off within 30 seconds and YouTube's not going to show that to new viewers. So again, it comes back to that quality control before you press record on a video, before you press upload on a video, ask yourself, would I watch this myself? Number five is scripting for attention. YouTube's only gonna recommend your videos to other people if people are watching until the end. So there's a certain structure you need to use when scripting your videos. And I'll use this video as an example to explain this. So every single video needs to start off with a hook that will keep viewers engaged. The first 10 to 15 seconds of a video is when most viewers click off. So at the start, you need to build credibility immediately and tell viewers why they actually need to listen to you. So for this video, I introduced myself as spending two years researching YouTube and also starting off that channel where I've got 5,000 subscribers and I've got that many views in such a short space of time. Now that people see you actually know what you're talking about, they're far more likely to keep listening to you. Then you should get onto the crux of the video and have your different points. In this video, I have seven points and I made sure to have very valuable ones, especially at the start. Like for me, looking at videos that have already done well and the proven method is probably one of the most important tips for any new YouTuber. And what a lot of people forget about is that you want people to stay towards the end. So you need to give them a reason to want to watch the whole video. So in this video, I'm going to be doing an entire case study of step by step how I got that viral video right at the end of everything to make sure that people stay around. So every time you script a YouTube video, make sure you've got that hook, the core, giving value away and an exciting ending. Ali Abdal, who has about 6 million subscribers, taught me the next tip because he gave a talk at my university and that's to under optimize your videos. So of course, the first tip taught you that you need to optimize them to YouTube trends, but you also can't come across too professional and robot-like whilst you're talking. This is why Ali, for example, will make a point and then he'll say and stuff at the end of the sentence to show viewers that he's human and he's not perfect. You want to relate to your viewers. A lot of you guys watching this will be young people trying to start out on YouTube and you'll see my face. You know, I'm a 19 year old myself. It's a lot more valuable coming from me who was in a similar position to you a couple of years ago than from an 80 year old or a 40 year old with a very successful channel. I'll tell you myself that I made tens of videos that got absolutely no views. This is my fourth YouTube channel. You want to show vulnerability to your viewers so they can relate to you and see that they can achieve what you have because not long ago I was in a similar position. Highlight your failures but then also go on to how you turn things around and where you are today. The seventh tip is cleanness. The way that you can separate yourself from 98% of YouTubers is by getting LED lights. They're literally 30 pounds on Amazon. You can literally click on this video and get them right now. If I turn the LED lights off, which I can't really be asked to do right now, the background will look a whole lot worse and you probably, without realizing it, would be much more likely to click on this video. The LED lights and the nice background and then a good camera, makes it look like I know what I'm talking about, even though I don't. No, I'm joking. There's also websites online, and I was doing this for a little bit, where you can rent a good camera. So before I got this camera for Christmas, 
I was renting a camera for about £20 a day. And I know this sounds like a lot if you want to rent it all the time, but if you've scripted out 10 videos that you can rent a camera for one day and record all 10 of them. This way it's only going to cost you £20 for a day and you can knock out as many videos as you want with that clean aesthetic feel to your videos. Having a good camera, a good mic, and good lighting will separate you from the pack, especially when you've optimized your thumbnails, titles, and the content of the video itself. I'm also gonna share some very quick extra tips that will help you blow up. The first video that I got 50,000 views on was on a different YouTuber, and it was called Why I Stopped Watching Hamza. Now this is what is called credit hacking, using a bigger creator's name in your title to get people interested. At this point, I was a new YouTuber, I think 17 years old. I didn't really have much to talk about, but I'd been watching his videos for a long time, and I kind of stopped watching them so I can concentrate on myself. So I decided to make a video using his name and discussing my opinions on someone that people actually care about, Hamza, from someone that people don't care about, me, to get myself views. And I hit 50,000 views on that video and that was massive for me starting out. And when you hit 50,000 views on one video, those viewers will click on your channel and see your own videos and maybe take an interest in that. So just like that, videos across your whole channel will increase in views. The second quick tip would be to use subtitles a lot of the time. You'd be surprised, but people's brains are absolutely fucked from IG Reels and TikTok. I found that using subtitles, especially in the intros of videos, helps to retain viewers a lot better. And I barely use TikTok, but something that pisses me off is when there's a longer video that one, doesn't use subtitles, and secondly, doesn't use YouTube chapters to separate the topics. Because if a video is 40 minutes and you don't have YouTube chapters, I promise you the average view time is gonna be about two. And the third quick tip would be not to sell too early. After I went viral on the educational channel, I decided to start selling coaching calls. And don't get me wrong, these did well financially, but I saw a little drop off in viewership following that. You wanna be that guy that is just giving value away for free and not asking anything from their viewers. So try to build up a big audience first first and then you can sell products. Now the final quick tip is to learn from other successful YouTubers. I've tried to help you with this video but you can also reach out over LinkedIn and email to successful people. Especially if you can meet up with a YouTuber or grab a quick phone call, you'll learn a hell of a lot. Earlier this year, I reached out over LinkedIn to a YouTuber who went to my school. He has 1.3 million subscribers. I asked him to get on a 10 minute phone call. He was kind enough to do so. And a month later, I was at his house looking at his setup and asking him questions. This helped me massively. For example, he was the one that told me to get lights. So try and do that yourself and get out of your comfort zone. So let's go step by step on this specific video and how it went viral. So first of all, on my YouTube homepage, I was just seeing academic videos all the time. Videos like how to be an academic weapon absolutely blowing up. So although I probably wouldn't make a studying channel if it was just up to me and what I like, I decided to make a channel in that niche because I saw that it was popular. Now I needed to find video ideas. So I spent an entire evening typing in the keywords, academic, student, studying, and creating a list of 10 to 20 videos that had done really well in the last six months to a year. And in particular, I put videos that had outperformed subscriber count in bold. If a video had 200,000 views and the channel only had 40,000 subscribers, I put that in bold. Then it came to thumbnails and I planned this alongside the script before ever pressing record on the camera and starting to create the video. From the successful videos I'd found, I copied and pasted the thumbnails that kept showing up. In the academic niche, there was a triple stock image type thumbnail that was just trending and absolutely blowing up. And these were just generic images put side by side in a sort of aesthetic way rather than pictures of the actual YouTuber themselves, rather than putting their actual face in it. You have to copy what works. Then once I chose a video from the list, how to be an academic weapon, I completely copied the title word for word. And I watched through that video and similar videos to see what sort of topics were being touched on. However, I then put my video into my own style. I structured the video in a very specific way. So if you, you can go watch the video now, I start off with the hook and I immediately introduce myself as someone who's got straight A's for his whole career and I show proof on the screen. That's a reason why any student would want to watch me and take my advice. I then give valuable tips on how to become an academic weapon 
straight away. I tell them not to revise for 12 hours a day, but to revise for two and to go to a library so they can properly focus. I literally, in the first like 20 seconds, say, I'm not gonna waste your time and get straight into the important tips. And then for retention, I kept a super important tip towards the end so that people would keep on watching. And I also use YouTube chapters to keep them engaged and to help them know what I was talking about at each point. And in terms of length, I decided that the video should be three to four minutes long because that was the type of video length that was working within that niche for the other videos. Again, looking to see what has worked. And this process that mixed successful videos with my own style helped the video to blow up. And it didn't matter that my channel was really small at the time, it just kept on growing and growing and growing. First it hit 50,000, then it was my first ever 100,000 video. Now it's on 200 something thousand. I guarantee you that if I keep on following the formula and make good videos that blow up, this video will probably reach 500,000 views sometime soon probably within this year. And obviously within that video, I had good lighting, good mic. I rented out a camera while I didn't have my own. I also employed a clean editing style that was similar to what the other channels were doing with just basic zooms, some nice aesthetic transitions and some pop-ups, but nothing too crazy. Again, similar to what would work. So at the end of the whole process, when I was ready to press upload on the video, I asked myself, if I was a student two years ago, would I actually watch this video? Would I click on it? Would it actually give me value? would I come back for more? And to every single one of those questions, the answer was yes. So I uploaded it and it went viral.